Okay, this is the section on increase, decrease, and concavity. So I have a graph pictured here. And to get started, Okay, so increasing, decreasing, and constant describes the behavior of the graph when it's moving from the left to the right in that direction. So in our, in our picture here, this section is increasing, this section is decreasing, and here we are increasing again, and constant. So writing it out, Okay, so as you saw me writing out, the graph is increasing from one to, on the intervals from one to two, and from the intervals three to four. It's decreasing right here on this interval from two to three. And f of x is constant starting here at four, going on to infinity. So it's always increasing, decreasing on an x interval. So what does the derivative of the function tell us about the graph of the function? So let's look at a couple pictures here. So we're looking at the derivative. The derivative of the function is the slope. So let's look at that slope, that slope, and that slope. And we'll call this at x1. So on this first graph, we can see f of x is increasing. This is my f of x. And so since the graph is increasing, what can we say about our derivatives? Looks like this slope at the first point is positive since it's increasing. This slope is increasing, so it's positive. And this slope is positive also. So I think we can say at all these points, one, two, and three, they're greater than zero. Slope at every point is positive. So, well, this one looks like it's negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. And we can also see that the function itself is decreasing. Each of the slopes at the points are negative. Here we can see this is a constant function, and since it's constant, each of those slopes is zero. And I should call these xi, not x, not one, two, and three is i. So this is basically our test for increasing, decreasing, and constant. the derivative's greater than zero, if it's positive, we have an increasing function. If the derivative is negative on this interval, then the function is decreasing on that interval. If the derivative is equal to zero, then f is a constant on AB. So we do include the endpoints because it is increasing up to that point because that last point will be bigger than the previous one. Let's do an example. So we have to find the derivative, and to find out where this function is positive and negative, we need a sign chart. Always label your sign chart which function it is. So a zero of this chart, as you find your zeros, set your function equal to zero, and that's zero. And we want to test a point to the right and to the left. It doesn't matter which point. I would test zero on the left. This is 2.5, so perhaps three or four, it doesn't matter which. We can test three. We're doing a sign chart on the derivative, so we do plug this into the derivative. That's why you should always label it. So we have to find the value of zero of the derivative. Since this is negative five, 
it's negative on the interval of minus infinity to the 5 halves. Since we've got 1, it's positive. I also want to remind you, this is a line, or you can think of it as our, our 0, 5 halves. Our 0 is just 1. If it's a line, it crosses through, and it's going to be alternating. So once you find 1 and you know it's alternating, then you have the other one. And we, with this idea, we will be able to do a faster sign chart that's going to be more accurate if you understand the cause. So to answer our question now, our function is decreasing where it's negative on minus infinity to 5 halves. And our function is increasing. And that's our answer. Again, positive, increasing, negative, decreasing. We know that this is testing increase and decrease, so I like to show it. It's decreasing there, and it's increasing there. So our next question is to look at the second derivative, and what do you think the second derivative is going to tell us about the graph of our function? So what we're going to do, I'll tell you the answer. It's concavity. But what that means is if we have a graph that's concave up, if I draw a tangent line, that m equals 0. If I move to the right, there's an m that equals 1. That's positive. There's an m somewhere that equals 2. And looks like these are just getting steeper. If we go backwards, this is symmetrical, but we're going to have a negative slope. And then it gets even steeper. So this is a bowl up. So this is f is concave up. So what's happening to these slopes? Again, we can see 0, 1, 2, 3. That's increasing. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Those are increasing also. Negative 2 is larger than negative 3. So if you have a concave up and we look at all of our slopes, we can see the slopes are increasing from left to right. And let's look at a concave down. So we can see here the slopes are negative, here the slopes are positive, but if you start from left to right, 3, 2, 1, 0, that's decreasing, and it continues decreasing because this is smaller than negative 1. So let's write that out. So here the slopes are concave up. If the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing, here f is concave down if the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing. Now let's write this out. Just an explanation of first the first derivative. So if we have our function increasing, that means the derivative is 0. If our function is decreasing, our function is less than 0. So our test for concavity, so what we just saw also, so if f is concave up, we just saw the picture up there that meant the derivative, the slopes, is increasing. So just like f of x is increasing, meaning the derivative is positive, f prime of x is increasing means the derivative of the derivative is greater than 0. So that's going to mean the second derivative is positive. And same with the concave down. We just saw that the derivative, the slopes, slope is decreasing, which means that the derivative of that is the second derivative is less than 0. It's negative. So formally now, our test for a concavity, it's right here really, f concave up. We have the second derivative is greater than 0. For f to be concave down, the second derivative is negative. So let's write that out. So the second derivative is positive, then it's concave up on the same interval. If the second derivative is negative on AB, 
then F is concave down on AB. Let's do an example. So to find concave up and concave down, we have to find the second derivative. And then we need a sign chart on this. So we set this equal to zero. So these are our zeros, x equals zero and one third. It's a quadratic. So it makes sense that we only have two. We could spread them out so we can see. And also don't forget, you wanna label your sign chart, which one it is every single time. So three x minus one, this zero is three x minus one and there's no power to it. Or if there is, it's a power of one which means at this zero, it looks like a line, okay? So it crosses one third as a line, which means it's alternating. The graph either goes like this and it's negative positive, or it goes like this where it's positive negative. So all we know is it, it looks like a line at one third because it's a linear zero. And so we are going to have to test one of them, and I'm going to test maybe um, five. It could be two, three, four, five, ten, 10, 100. It doesn't matter. It never changes over here. So we test five into our function, and I'm going to plug it into here. 12 times 5 times 3 times 5 minus 1. This is 14, 60. I don't need to multiply that out. They're two positives, so it's positive, and this is negative. At zero, there's no exponent to it. It's one, so that graph looks like a line crossing x equals zero. Since I know this is negative, it has to be positive here, okay? Now, we could always just test two more points to be sure, but if you understand this concept, which I will explain this concept in, a, in the next video I make, we don't have to actually plug in very many numbers. You know, another way we can see that this is positive, it's, we can see the leading coefficient is positive. We can see it's just a parabola. Leading A is B, so the function looks like that, and it makes sense, it crosses those zeros, plus, minus, plus. And as I mentioned, it looks like a line here, and it looks like a line here, plus, minus, plus. Okay? So this, finishing this problem, it's concave up, concave down, concave up. And to answer the question, and this is our function f. So there's the answer to my question. Now we're gonna be graphing a lot of functions in the coming up sections. So I wanna just note, when we put together concave up, concave down, increase, decrease, any combination can occur. So here F is increasing and here F is concave down. Try to draw that. So if we have a section where F is increasing and the concavity is down, increasing concavity down, it can be looking like that. That's concave down, but it's also getting larger as we move left to right. This is concave up, but also increasing, so we just move that like a bowl up. Two more scenarios can happen. So this is decreasing, decreasing, concave down, decreasing, concave up. Try those two. One problem that I think is fun to do Trying to put it together. So two four is a point on the line. That's this. The derivative at two is zero. That means the slope at two is zero. Well, we could try, it could be that. That slope is definitely zero. But we have, that's concave up everywhere. On our second derivative at two, it's plus minus, so concave up, concave down. It's concave up here, it's concave up here, so it could look like that, but it cannot continue like that. 
So maybe we, it's concave down from here. We go concave down. Let's make that a little bit smoother. Concave up, concave down. That's my first guess. And let's make sure it satisfies the derivative is negative from two. So it's concave down, positive, concave up. The derivative at two equals zero. Yes, that's actually true. It's harder to see, but think of this as continuing, and that is continuing. So yeah, that works. And f of two equals four. Now this was our first guess, but I want us to take a look at why not, why not this combination. Let me draw that smoother. So why not this? And then that. So this is concave up, concave down. Yeah, this is this fits. And the answer, do you see why? The derivative on this picture does not exist at two. That's because remember when you have that's a cusp. This is a cusp. A cusp has a DNE, does not exist. It's a sharp point, like the absolute value. Actually, I have a second one. Why not? Why not coming in this way? Concave up and then concave down. This is concave up and then concave down. So why doesn't it fit this one? So here, here, the derivative at two does exist. Is this one? It looks smooth. Well, it doesn't exist. Why not? Because this is our, this is our um, vertical tangent line. So that is a DNE. That derivative does not exist because of that. So it's the same answer of prime 2 DNE because it's a vertical tangent line. One last point. When we have this situation where it changes concavity, if you have plus to the right, negative to the left or vice versa this is called an inflection point changes concavity it's at x equals two the inflection point is two f of two which we know is two four because we were given that point definition So basically, changes signs at x naught. Thanks for watching. Until next time.